everyone! I hope you all are doing well. In this week's video, I will be showing you all how to paint these simple mountain scenes. I will be working with gouache in this video, but this tutorial can also be used for acrylic or poster paints. For this first painting, I will be using four colors, titanium white, cerulean blue, acid blue, and black. You obviously don't need these specific paint colors to make these, but I would suggest trying to have at least some variation of white, blue, and a black tone to follow along with. You will also need some water and a towel to clean your brushes as you work. For brushes, I am using Zen Acrylic Shader Synthetic Brushes. Like the paint, you can really use any type of brush you're comfortable with. These are just the brushes I currently like to use. For paper, I am using a sheet of Canson watercolor paper cut into a 7 by 11 sheet. I will have links to all of my supplies in the description. To begin, I started with taping a border along the edge of my piece. When you are done with the painting, you could pull away this tape to give your piece a much cleaner look around the edges. This also helps with stopping the paper from sliding while you work. I begin the painting process by sketching in my composition with a lighter wash of blue. I prefer to sketch in my composition with paint because I find the pencil lines can often leave grooves or dark lines that are really hard to cover with gouache. Going in with a paint sketch makes it much easier to cover with paint as you continue working. This phase of the piece is just the sketch, so be sure to keep your strokes light and fluid. This sketch can easily be modified later on in the painting, so don't worry about getting every little detail. The main composition here is the most important part. Mountains are organic shapes, not perfect triangles or cones, so be sure to place varying levels of heights to establish a foreground and a background. As the mountains recede into the distance, they gradually become smaller and less detailed. Their peak exists below and in relation to the peak of the front mountains. This relationship of foreground and background will be established more once we move on to colors. After my sketch is complete, I begin establishing my base colors, working mostly from background to foreground. Gouache paint is water soluble and can be easily covered in a few minutes if you aren't happy with the color you've laid down or you want to alter your composition. As objects recede back into the background, they become less detailed and saturated. For this first piece, objects in the background take a lighter blue hue as they recede into the cloud line. For the mountains in the background, I stuck to using a larger flat brush and laid in my forms with rougher and larger strokes. The furthest mountains will be the lightest blue in the piece, gradually increasing in color as they reach the mountain in the foreground. As with the sketch, I made sure to keep my drawing organic. My biggest tip for drawing nature is to remember that nothing is ever truly symmetrical. So in a painting, you should try to avoid making all of your shapes or your composition line up perfectly. Once the base colors are established, you can move on to detailing. The mountain in the foreground, or the one closest to us as the viewer, will be the one we spend the most time on. This step of the painting is where you will bring your white and black colors to establish the darkest and lightest areas of the painting. Placing your whitest white next to the darkest tones creates a much stronger contrast in the piece and accentuates the perspective. This process is the most time consuming portion of the painting. Be sure to constantly flip between different brush sizes, starting with your largest brush for larger accents of highlights and shadows before going in with a smaller lino brush for the final cracks and details. This part of the painting is always my favorite because it's when the piece really starts coming together and resembling a landscape.
for this next piece, I followed a very similar process to the last painting. For this piece, I am using titanium white, black, grass green, and jade green. Again, these specific shades of green are not necessary. I would just recommend having a lighter and darker green tone to work from. I began with an initial sketch in a light green tone, establishing the composition of my mountains in the background and foreground. I created this sketch following the same principles as my last piece, using organic, asymmetrical shapes to create a series of sloping hills that led into a valley. Like the last piece, I blocked in my colors with much lighter tones of green, gradually working from light to dark as the piece reached the foreground. For the closest mountains, I used a combination of black and green to create a really dark tone that contrasted sharply with the background. This dark tone made it much easier to establish the details of the trees and greenery on the mountains when I began the detailing process of this piece. The details in the foreground were created by mixing a very saturated shade of green and overlaying it on top of the black shadows. This draws attention to the areas of the painting that I worked with in detail and also creates an asymmetry to the valley composition.
Well, that is it for this tutorial. I would love to see what all of you have created. Feel free to tag me on Instagram with your work or leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions on this video or for other tutorials. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all really soon in the next one.